is your most vivid childhood memory at the track? Oh, we had some dandies. Me and my brothers there, uh, Curtis especially, we used to, we, we, we haven't missed a gold cup and saucer since we were little, but when we were when we were real small, we used to get sticks off the branch, or the branches off the trees, and we'd pretend they were whips, and then we'd race each other up and down the pavement along the side of the track, and we'd be yelling at the drivers, and oh, we were always horses from the gold cup, so it was, uh, it was pretty dumb. Probably playing on the limestone pile with uh, all the other uh, up-and-coming kids out here who were growing up. <laughs> Probably sitting on the grandstand here, uh, Scott Zero. We used to, when we were like six, seven, six years old, we were sitting up there with the whip and stuff, and uh, we'd, break, we'd break five or ten whips a night up there in the, in the stands. I, I doubt they're allowed to do that anymore, but we, that's what we used to do. And now to be racing down here and doing good together, it's, it's, probably, it's a lot of fun. It's pretty cool. We always used to play pranks on people, so, so uh, I remember one time uh, <laughs> we took a guy's bike apart and tied all the parts to the fence as he was supposed to race his horse, and he did not find it near as amusing as we did. We hid for quite a while. He was very angry. Anyway, I didn't do it, Mark did it, but it was funny. Well, early on, I remember going with my father and uh, some buddies of mine, all, their fathers were race fans too, so we'd go there and we'd meet up and racing was just the backdrop. I mean, we would go there, we'd have our own running races, we'd uh, pitch dimes in the grandstand and all this crazy stuff. And uh, so that, that was great. It was just sort of uh, a place to hang out with your buddies. And then over time, we all became aware that, hey, there's, there's racing going on, what's this about? And and we all learned and we all caught the bug. I mostly just remember kind of like uh, getting up Saturday mornings and um, my like my mom would take me to hockey and I knew the races here started at one o'clock and just being so excited to get here and um, just just hanging out with my friends that I had there and you know playing loonies and toonies up against the wall and betting at an early age and just kind of just just doing whatever I wanted. I suppose the first time I went to the horse races at Western Fair Raceway as a kid uh, with my father and I bet a he gave us uh, two dollars we could bet one race and I bet a daily double I can remember the the numbers were four seven and the daily double came in and paid hundred and eighty dollars I thought I was a millionaire after that I was very very young and I got to go with my dad it was to the thoroughbreds and most of the time we went along and we got our hot dogs and we did all that kind of stuff and this particular day I think I was getting bored and he said to me you pick you can pick whatever you want I'll bet on them for you and uh, it was the first time I ever saw an entry so as a little kid I thought well why wouldn't I go with a one and a one a I'm getting two for the price of one and it won and it paid a lot of money now I think my father made plenty on the deal but all I got was a hot dog and a soda out of it <laughs> When I was about uh, oh, 10 years old, my grandpa sent down $5 for us to bet on a horse. So I ran over to the grandstand and bet the horse, and I'm not sure how they let me bet because I really wasn't old enough to bet, but I went over a few races early and bet the horse, but when I came back, I realized that they bet for the sixth race, and our horse wasn't in until the eighth race, and that horse made a break, and my grandpa lost his money, and our horse went out and won the race. So I had to go home and tell them that we had good news that our horse won the race, but bad news, I bet on the wrong horse. My most vivid memory at the track was uh, I was walking around doing checking uh, equipment when I was about 10 or 11 years old. I know I was 10 or 11 because Dave Hanna wouldn't let us in the paddock unless we were 10. You had to have an ORC license and you had to be 10 to get one. And uh, Dave was a tough guy to get, in, get, get by at the paddock. So um, anyways, I was in and I was, uh, Old Nipper was uh, letting me, uh, Charlie ne Charles Nagel was letting me uh, check the um, equipment, just having some fun. And the guy that worked for my dad, this real jerk, he came up behind me. I was, like I said, 10 or 11 or 12. And he pulled my pants down. And uh, there I was holding the clipboard and standing in front of somebody. and. Uh, you can, you can picture the rest. I was devastated, and I still have a vivid memory of that. It's the old Greenwood days when, uh, it, I forget how much admission was to get in the grandstand, but we would always jump the fence and uh, have the security guys chase us around the grandstand in Greenwood, and um, that was probably the most vivid memory I have of Greenwood as a child, that's for sure. Greenwood Raceway. Uh, Dean Wall and I used to run races up and down uh, the old backstretch there and, and that was a long time ago and 
a lot of fond memories of old Greenwood. I think when I was a child, I really loved to go to Greenwood Raceway, especially in the summertime. Uh, I can remember going down there and watching uh, um, the horses just coming onto the track and, and the whole presentation of it all. It was just stood out in my mind as a kid. Definitely Greenwood going with my dad and, and uh, where the, the split was for the grandstand and the backstretch. He used to go to the grandstand and I used to head to the backstretch and uh, be back before the last race to go home with him. Pretty well every summer I used to uh, go down to Calgary and, and spend the summer with my dad racing and uh, it's something I always look forward to. Uh, more so than baseball or anything like that, I wanted to go get the track. I can remember when I was young going to Garden City with my mom and dad, and we, we'd camp down at the falls and watch the races on the weekend. That was, that was nice. Going to the races with my grandparents all the time, that was always fun. Probably when my dad used to drive. I used to like go in there and watch him drive, like when he raced at Hanover and spots like that. That was probably pretty special. Just going to race the horses. With my father, you know, like uh, he was, uh, he got, he got us started, and it, it was like a family affair. Then like, the whole family went to uh, race the horses, so it would be definitely uh, time spent with my father. I remember I used to go to the races, uh, Blue Bonnets in Montreal. Uh, my dad would race, and uh, we'd go there on Sunday afternoon. And one time I got my picture taken with him, and I got to ride back to the paddock with him on the salt gate. That was pretty neat. Riding the cart back from the Winter Circle, uh, watching my dad race down in Corth to say, and you know, just uh, being able to sit on the cart as a kid and ride back to the barn. I used to come here all the time when I was a kid. I was born and raised in London, so uh, I used to like coming with my uh, grandparents. They had an old horse called In the Chips, and I was probably four or five at the time, but I used to ride them bareback as they cooled them out after the races in the paddock, so I thought that was great being able to ride on that horse as he cooled out. I would have to say a great memory for me was there was a day Rito Carlton put on and it had my dad driving about 14 races that day and for him to, to watch him to go out and drive every race after race just like all the catch drivers do, he was able to show his talent which he, which he has quite a bit of in the race bikes. So I'll always remember that day when he had a whole day dedicated to drives for him. It was a lot of fun. Uh, grandfather used to take me sand on raceway. He used to watch Billy Davis, senior. I paddocked the horse for Keith Waples, and uh, he trained it and drove it, and W. Earl Rowe owned it, and he was, I guess he was lieutenant governor or governor general, and that was pretty special night. I mean, I was only 12 years old, I think, so that was pretty special, just paddocking one for Keith Waples. I mean, he was... He was God back then, and everybody had so much respect for him, and I got the paddock one for him, and then, then the horse won, so that was, a, that was a pretty good night. I would say one of the, my more, more memorable moments as a, a child was when I uh, was paddocking a horse for uh, Murray Maguire. We were stabled in London, and we trucked to uh, Greenwood, and, uh, I was, uh, and, and Ronnie Fagan come up and uh, said some nice words to me, and I'll, I'll always uh, remember that uh, about Ronnie Fagan. I think I got pictures at home, I can't remember, but I was getting, uh, we won my, well, my stepfather at the time won a stake race here at Mohawk, and I was in the winter circle with the owners and Ron Fagan at the time, but I remember, you know, that was, a, you know, it seemed like the breeder's ground to me, right, a kid 13, 14 years old paddocking this horse, but, and, he, you know, we were out in the winter circle here with, in a big stake race, but I know I, I still relive that moment the odd time. I was always in awe of the people that were successful, you know, going back to then uh, of Hervé Fillion and Keith Waples, my cousin, and uh, guys like that, uh, George Schultes and uh, Billy Houghton, Stanley Dancer. You know, probably one of my most vivid memories was, you know, we grew up in uh, Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, and my mom and dad trained at a county fairgrounds, and I can just remember you know, going to the Grand Circuit at the Illinois State Fair, and that's when, you know, uh, all the big stables would ship in, you know, the Jim Dennis and, and Continental and Ron Gerfine, and those were all people that I was just in awe of because, you know, I was coming from a small town and uh, trained at a county fairgrounds where my parents did, and I was, uh, you know, 11, 12-year-old kid doing, hoping to do catch paddocks, and I would see these people, and I would just be mesmerized by, these were the people I read about all the time, and I mean, now, you know, Ron Gerfine's my friend. I mean, you know, so it's just amazing that, uh, you know, to have those childhood dreams and be able to say, these people are my friends now. So I, I, I really enjoy that. I think I was five at Old Elmira Raceway 
Dave Boughton put his helmet in, on my head and gave me his whip and said, go have fun. And I guess I told my mother I was going to be a driver right from then. So we got, my mom has Dave Boughton to thank for me being a driver, whether or not that's a good thing or not. So, but uh, that's, so I'm happy he did that. So then that way I'm at where I am today. My dad, who passed away five years ago, used to take me all the time. He'd pick me up at school and, and all the big ones for sure, as well as Greenwood or or uh, Mohawk uh, on Friday and Saturday nights. Um, a specific one I remember, Art's Place, uh, went in the Breeders' Crown. When I uh, saw Brett Hanover win the Prix de in Montreal, I think I was nine years old. I think it was in 66 or 67. I was nine or 10 years old, you know. That was really, you know, I always gonna remember that horse. I remember I was about five or six year old, six years old, and <clears throat> they brought Brent Hanover back after he won the Basin Derby, and he bowed in front of the grandstand. I thought that was cool. Probably one of the earliest recollections I have when I was a kid was uh, going to Flamborough to watch the Confederation Cup when Ralph Hanover got beat. He he was a great great horse, and everybody expected him to win. And uh, that's right around the time when I was, you know, just really starting to get. Uh, get involved in racing and stuff like that. I was there that night and he didn't win, so it was kind of cool. The horse was racing uh, before, around the first year of the Sire Stakes. He wasn't eligible to the Sire Stakes. Derby's Gen, he got a lot of people in uh, southwestern Ontario interested in the horses. Well, the first day I came to Western Fair Raceway, I was 13. I go back to my hometown of Collingwood, Ontario, and I raced my first horse. I was 14 years old. His name was J.R. Spencer. I bought him for $250. And I had him at the Milton Fair, at the Collingwood Fairgrounds. We always run a 24th of May race card there then. And he was in like a maiden race there, and he won in 218 and 2. And the purse was $100, so he got 50, and Les Ehrlich, God bless his soul, Ehrlich's salary, gave a cooler and a halter. And that's what I got that day. And my dad was there, and of course my mother, and I'll never forget it. Probably jogging my first horse, I would say. Yeah, I remember that very vividly. Absolutely. What I remember as a kid uh, is probably uh, uh, picking up tickets, you know, like I used to be uh, an avid. My brother and I used to pick up tickets. My younger brother and I used to pick up tickets all over. And then if we ever got a winner, that's the, uh, you know, a $2 show bet, pay $2.60. Those, those, that's probably a, a very vivid, memorable thing for me, you know. And, and also probably seeing my brother win his first race when he was 16. Uh, those, those, that, that is a, a big memory for me too.